Today we're going to talk about variability with quantitative variables. Last time we talked about center and spread, and so today we'll finish out our uh, lectures on quantitative variables by talking about variability. And this corresponds to section 2.3 in lock 5. So there's several key concepts um, in today's lecture that are going to be important for you to understand. Um, the most important are going to be the standard deviation and probably z-scores as, as far as moving forward. Um, the interquartile range, uh, excuse me, not the interquartile range, but instead the five number summary is also going to be particularly important <clears throat> as we talk about box plots uh, next, next class, I think. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to begin by looking at some data. And this data comes from a research study by a, um, a researcher named Palmer. And she collected data on three different species of penguins. So what I have here are two different species. The penguin on the left is a Gen 2 penguin. And the species on the right is a Chinstrap penguin. And so we're going to look at data that involves all of these different penguins. But right now we're going to look at data that compares the Gen 2 penguins to the Chinstrap penguins. Specifically, we're going to look at the body mass. So what we have here is a dot plot of the chin strap and the Gen 2 uh, penguins. You can see that the top plot there corresponds to the chin straps, and the bottom plot corresponds to the Gen 2 penguins. And we can see that the body mass is what's being represented along the x-axis. And as typic is typically done in dot plots, we don't um, tend to label the y-axis, but you can sort of think about the y-axis here as just count. So. Whenever we look at a plot, we have a few different things we want to look at. We want to look at the shape. We want to look at the center. We want to look at variability. And we want to look at outliers. So we covered shape, uh, center, variability, and out. Um, we covered shape center and outliers last time and so today we'll talk about variability but whenever we look at a plot whether it's a histogram or it's a dot plot we always want to look for these four key things so let's begin by looking at the shape so if i look at the shape of both of these distributions they look to be roughly the same um, they kind of to me look to be more or less um, the, the, the chin strap one looks to be more or less symmetric right it possibly looks like it could be bell-shaped. The Gen 2 one also could be bell-shaped. It could also be considered symmetric, but it may also be considered to have sort of like these two humps, right? We can maybe see two humps there, and here for the chin strap, maybe we, we, don't, we don't really. Um, but I think at least if you're looking at that Gen 2 plot, I think it's probably equally likely to just kind of imagine a distribution that goes like that. So maybe that is also uh, maybe that could also be considered to be uh, just symmetric and with having a single mode. So we would call it just unimodal, right? Because I showed you before when you had those two peaks, this, maybe we could just consider it one peak. Um, so that's a focus right now, and that's how we would talk about the shape. So I would say neither one of these are skewed, and I would strongly hope uh, that at this point you would agree with me that neither one of these looks skewed. Um, if you disagree with me about this, that's fine. Uh, you should uh, you should let me know um, because the most important thing whenever you're looking at any of these plots is to be able to justify it. So if you're saying this looks skewed, I want you to tell me how does it look skewed? Why does it look skewed to you? And if you're able to justify that explanation, then you know arguably you could be correct. But in this case, I think that they are both pretty symmetric. The next thing is the center. <clears throat> so. Let's use a different color for this. Uh, maybe red is a bad choice. So if we wanted to compare the center of these two, and usually when we have two side-by-side -side plots like this, we want to make comparisons against one another. So maybe the chin strap center is about here. I mean, if we're going to say it's symmetric, it's going to be roughly in the middle. Same thing with the Gen 2. Maybe we would say it's about here. Okay. So what we could say is that the mean of the Gen 2 distribution of uh, body mass is higher than the mean of chin strap. I think that's a pretty easy. Um, uh, I think that's a. Uh, I, I think that that's a pretty safe statement to make, 
um, to say that the body mass for the Gen 2 penguins is in, on average greater than that of the, min, uh, the chin strap. We see that there's some overlap between these two distributions, right? There are some uh, larger chin, chin strap penguins that are as big as the maybe the smaller Gen 2 penguins. But we see that a lot of the Gen 2 penguins are larger than the chin strap ones. So now let's skip variability for a second and let's look at outliers. Do we see any outliers? To me, I don't see any outliers. Now I can see how um, it might be possible to think of these two points as outliers, but I don't really think that they're outliers, especially if you draw that curve over uh, those points like what I did. It kind of looks like um, those points are actually just part of it, and maybe we've just undersampled this particular area, and that's why we're seeing fewer points. Maybe it's just in the tail, but it's not necessarily an outlier. So we're going to back that up. <clears throat> so we've addressed the issue of outliers. So now let's talk about variability. So when we're talking about variability, we're talking about how much over like sort of, we can think of it as a range possibly, but just how much variation is there in the data? Well, one thing you've probably learned how to do is to look at the range and you can identify maybe the minimum and the maximum of a data set. So if we look at the chin strap here, we see that the lowest value is about 2,500. Um, over here, we see that, um, I mean, just above 2,500, so maybe let's say it's 2,700. And then we see that uh, that it goes up to maybe maybe 4,700. We'll just do that to kind of keep the math the same. So maybe it ranges over, say, 2,000. Maybe that's what our range is. It's like 2,000. Um, now, if we want to look at the, uh, the Gen 2 ones, we see that, oh, it looks like it goes from about 4,000, maybe a little under 4,000 even, up to just about 6,500. And we'll keep that to be about the same. So we can say that that range is about 2,500. And if you're not familiar with the range, we'll define it momentarily. Um, but the range is just the maximum value minus the minimum value. So I give 4,700 minus 2,700 gives me 2,000. 6,500 minus 4,000 gives me 2,500. So we can see that there's greater variability for the Gen 2 penguins than there is for the chin strap penguins. So we've now identified all four of these things, right? So just a quick recap. Shapes, both symmetric. Center, the center of the Gen 2 is higher than the center of the chin strap, meaning on average, the body mass of Gen 2 penguins is going to be larger than that of chin strap penguins. Uh, there's greater variability for the Gen 2 than there are for the chin strap penguins, and there's no real outliers in this plot. So I hope when you see a plot like this that these are the four things you're going to go through and you're going to talk about. I'll do some scaffolding um, when we're doing activities, uh, but on the quizzes when I'm asking you to describe, to describe two different uh, graphs like this and make comparisons, I want you to talk about these four different things.